Hey everybody, Rebecca back. It has been a minute. I know I am looking rough. I am back from my trip to Sweden. The house renovations are coming along and I've been working all day today putting up shelving and towel racks in the master bathroom now that it is complete. The other bathroom is not done yet and the kitchen is not started yet, but things are kind of moving along. Y'all can see the pictures behind me. They now have frames. That will be in this May budget review you. They aren't hanging on the wall yet, but I'll get to that at some point. <laughs> so with this month being a very unusual month, considering the fact that I have been traveling for three weeks in May, I spent three weeks in Sweden. There were all sorts of home renovations going on while I was gone. So I wasn't quite sure how much money was going to go towards my contractor this month. It's just been an interesting month budget wise. So without further ado, we will jump into the budget. If you're new here, welcome. I show my budgets every single month. These are my real numbers. My goal here on the channel is to reach financial independence and retire early. So if that is something that interests you, click the subscribe button down below and let's take a look at how I spent my money in May. All right, here we are looking at my Google Sheets budget. This is my May 2022 budget. If you guys like the style of this layout, I do have this budget available as a free download. The link to my Ko-Fi page is in the description box down below. Y'all can download this for free and use it yourselves if you like it. As you can see, it's pretty simple. I just make a plan for the month in column C and then I fill out column D as the month goes along and there's some other informational things out to the side here. So starting at the top with my net income for May. There are some very large numbers here at the top. This carryover, I have had a large amount of money just sitting in my checking account waiting for these renovations to get going. And they did get going really hot and heavy this month. So I had a large amount sitting in my checking and I knew things were really gonna start moving along this month. So I also did a Fidelity transfer. I've been having some cash sitting in my Fidelity account also set aside knowing that I was likely going to need it for renovations for the house. So I moved over $20,000 from my Fidelity account into my checking account as well. That way everything is there ready to go for my contractor as fast as they can get stuff done. I can pay them and we can keep all these renovations going. I do have a couple rows blacked out here. This is my um, paychecks from work and I don't show those on the channel just for privacy reasons reasons, but I do show totals down at the bottom. Next is an Amazon refund. I can't exactly remember what this was. I think something didn't fit and I sent it back. Oh yeah, I remember what it is now. <laughs> it's the frames that I bought for the um, picture frames that did not fit, so I had to return those to Amazon. Next is my North Carolina tax refund. I got $75 back, it showed up this month. Fidelity Rewards, this is the credit card that I use that earns me cash back that goes directly to my Fidelity account every single month, and I earned $59.21 in April, gets paid 1st of May. And then AdSense, I have not been making as many videos as I usually do lately, so my YouTube income has really suffered but I did finally cross the $100 threshold to get that payout in May. So I estimated it was gonna be about $150 and I was correct, brought in $147.32. So total down here at the bottom, I had about $44,500 to work with for May. Let's see where this money went. Moving down into the bills and spending section here, starting at the top, the mortgage payment for this house is $735 every month. My utilities, which includes power, water, sewer, trash pickup, all of that. I budgeted $100 and came in at $93.02. Internet is $55.21 every month. Gym membership, $23.06. Now that one of my bathroom renovations is totally done, I do need to go to Planet Fitness sometime and cancel this membership because there is no Planet Fitness near me. So if I have a gym membership, it's gonna have to be to one of the local gyms um, in the city that I live in now. So I do need to go and cancel this at some point 
I'll get to it sometime. Next after that, gas for my car. I knew I was gonna be in Sweden for most of the month, so I budgeted $50 and I filled up my car before I left and I was correct in that I was not gonna be spending much for gas this month. I spent $45.24. Good thing too, because gas prices keep going up. So yeah, we'll see what it ends up being for June, but at least I got a break on the fuel for my car in May. But guys, if you think fuel is expensive here in America, just go to Sweden for a while, okay? Like, I did the math, and gas over there is about $7.50 a gallon, so really, we don't have it as bad as we think we do. After that, we have my food household, Rollo budget, anything that I get when I am out grocery shopping every day goes into this category. Um, it tends to be my miscellaneous catch-all category. I budget $500 every month for this category and tend to go over most of the time, but happy to say that I stayed under budget this month. I spent $478.14, and most of this spending was just dining out and some spending that I did while I was in Sweden this month. After that, laundry. I budgeted 20 bucks here because I knew that my contractor was supposed to be finishing my laundry area renovation this month and he did do that so thankfully I do have a working washer and dryer in my house now so I won't have to go to the laundromat anymore but I did go before I left for Sweden at the beginning of the month and that was ten dollars and fifty cents hopefully this is the last time we will see laundromat charges in my budget so next we have Wayfair $439.99 this is renovation stuff I have another line item for Wayfair down here here this $548.06 that was not renovation stuff this mostly was a new pots and pans set that I bought and I got some other things for the house too that I just wanted to have and in between here Lowe's $519.61 this is renovation related most of it is the new backsplash that I'm gonna put in my kitchen and I got a few other things at Lowe's while I was there next after that is my flight seat selection this is is a little bit extra that I paid to be able to pick my seat on the transatlantic flight back home and worth the money to be able to do that. The transatlantic flights are about seven and a half, eight hours, so I would gladly pay an extra $30 to pick a slightly better seat. Don't get me wrong, I'm still flying economy, but uh, it's nice to be able to choose my seat. And again, travel related expenses here. I had to get a COVID test before I came back to the US. Ironically, I did not need one to fly into Sweden, but coming home, we still have to have a COVID test. So I spent $50.62 at the airport in Stockholm to get a COVID test before I boarded my flight, which obviously was negative, otherwise I would not be home. <laughs> And then after that, this GoFundMe thing, um, I went to ultrasound school with a girl who is from Ukraine and she is going to fly over to Ukraine and take some ultrasound equipment to some of the hospitals over there that need it. And so I contributed to her GoFundMe account where she was raising money for this ultrasound equipment and um, she's gonna fly over and help them out, which I think is wonderful. So that was $105 there. Etsy, I bought some things on Etsy that I just wanted. I bought some new earrings and this little ear cuff thing that I'm wearing. I got myself a new thumb ring. I just bought some odds and ends jewelry related stuff and that was $105.22. Richard, $150. This is a very kind neighbor that I have who cut my grass while I was in Sweden. So paid him $150 to cut my grass for a few weeks. And lastly here, you can see my custom picture frames. That's for these pictures behind me. That was $254.01 kind of irritating that these pictures were such a weird size but oh well i'm glad to have them framed now they do look a lot better and the last line item here big money sixteen thousand five hundred dollars went towards my contractor for may so 
I knew that this line item was going to be huge. I just had no idea how much before I left. So this $16,500 is covering the labor for my master bathroom that is done. The walls he had to move to fix my closet and the master bathroom the way that we wanted it. It's covering the labor for the other second bathroom and for my kitchen. So it's a good amount of money and I'm hoping that this will do it for the inside renovations and then he can get started on the outside of the house which is going to be a new deck a new fence for Rollo and new siding around the house so also going to be some big changes outside of the house but um, hopefully this will do it for inside so grand total for the month the only thing that I could budget for ahead of time was about two thousand dollars worth of spending but I knew the contractor was going to be a lot of money so I ended up spending a little over $20,000 in the month of May. The next section is my debt section and I only have one non-mortgage debt left. That is my car and I pay $500 on that every single month. We can check the balance when I click over to June here. So we're looking at the June tab here and this is what I will owe on my car come June 1st. $28,845.94. My interest rate on the car is only 1.98% which is why I'm not super aggressive right now as far as paying it off, but I will pay it off quickly at some point in the future. Of the $500 that I sent towards the car payment, $456.68 went towards principal and lost $43.32 to interest. The year to date totals to debt, this is all just car payments for the first five months of the year. I don't count my mortgage payments and my year to date debt payment totals. And you can see that most of my payments has gone towards the principal that I owe on the car. Flipping back over to May, we are looking at my favorite section of the budget, and this is my investing and fire tracking portion of the budget. I have several different investing accounts listed here, including my employer retirement account. I do like to keep track of the money that goes towards that here. And starting at the top with um, M1 Finance, I have a taxable account with them, and y'all, with the market going down like it was, I just could not resist. And I didn't think that I was going to need all of the extra money that I got from my home sale for renovations on this house. So I went ahead and threw $11,000 in my M1 account this month. And then the market kept going down anyway. I should have been patient, but hey, that's what happens. Um, I don't regret doing it. I still got the shares that I got on a good deal. So I'm happy that I did that, but uh, would have been nice to catch the market at the very bottom. I am filming this on Sunday, May 29th. So the last couple of market days have actually been pretty green. Seems like we've had a little bit of a rebound, but otherwise it has been a terrible month for the markets and I've just been watching my portfolio go down and down and down. So, but that's fine. I'm not worried about it. I know it will come back. It's fine. <laughs> After that, I do also have my Roth IRA with M1 Finance, and that has already been maxed out for the year, so no contributions there. Next after that is my Fidelity account. This is where my credit card rewards go, and I list those here, the $59.21. Next after that is my crypto portfolio, and I did not buy any more crypto in May. And lastly, my work retirement account. My contributions this month, I thought, are usually around $450, but because I took so much vacation hours this month, I did not get my usual third shift differential in my paychecks. So my contributions were smaller this month. I came in at $385.90 and my employer matched $220.51. So grand total for the month here, I sent $11,665.62 towards investing, which is awesome. I am so excited for that. And I do still have almost $13,000 sitting in my checking account that I'm just going to roll over into June and save for further renovations whenever that money is needed. Y'all can see in column E over here, this is where I track my portfolio balances in each of these accounts. And I did update this before I started filming this video. So whew, my portfolio is definitely down. It's frustrating to see it beneath the 200,000. The highest 
number that I saw, I believe was like 226,000, but the market is down right now. And furthermore, I took $20,000 of cash out of my Fidelity account for these home renovations that I'm doing. So it ended up being a big hit on the portfolio, but hopefully I'll at least get back up above that 200,000 soon if the market keeps recovering. But if not, that's okay too. I will just keep investing. As for my savings rate for May, uh, it came in at 47.19%, so that is a pretty darn good savings rate. I cannot throw $11,000 into the market every single month for sure, but um, it's nice to see that the savings rate was pretty good this month. And my am I financially independent yet? My goal is to get to 1.2 million invested and I am 16.12% of the way there. And this little number out to the side here, not so little I should say, <laughs> almost $88,000. This is how much money I have thrown at investing this year in total. This includes everything, my work contributions, the money that I've thrown in from my home sale that I had back in February. So yeah, it's been a good year as far as the amount of money that I've put in the portfolio this year. Hopefully the market will recover and I'll really start to see that compound interest work in my favor. Okay guys, that will cover it for the May budget review. I think while I am at it, I am gonna go ahead and film my June budget plan here. It's so close to June and since I've already closed out my May budget, I have had a few expenses already for my June budget, but we'll take a look at that. Overall, May was a fantastic month for me. <laughs> I really do struggle sometimes with balance on the fire journey and taking three weeks off to go to Sweden and just have some time off of work to spend with my loved ones was very sorely needed. And I did not even realize how stressed out I was until I was able to step away for a while. So I'm feeling very zen now after having some time off of work. I hope that feeling lasts. I hope that May went just as well for you. Let me know down in the comment section below and I'll catch y'all in my next video. Thanks for watching y'all. Bye.